For more than two decades, you've been a pioneer in coming up with new technologies and new algorithms, both in healthcare and business. Now you're being described as a pioneer in unconventional computing. What is unconventional computing? I mean, anything that is not how an iPhone, an iPad, or uh, you know, the computers in a data center work. Something that does not rely on transistors and integrated circuits, something that doesn't rely on the manipulation of zero and one bits, something that uh, you probably never have dreamt about. Got it. And is this something different than quantum computing? Quantum computing is a type of unconventional computing. And what makes quantum unconventional is instead of working with zero and ones, we're gonna be working with superpositions of zeros and ones and keeping them in something called quantum bits or qubits that is a quintessentially quantum mechanical phenomenon. And using those qubits to write algorithms and to manipulate information is what makes quantum computing quantum computing. And uh, that's what makes it unconventional. Got it. So you're saying that there are a lot of different types of quantum computing. Can you can you delve a little more specifically into the different types of quantum computing? Yeah, let me give you two examples. Uh, one that you probably hear of most often because IBM and Google have been investing in it is called circuit-based or gate-based quantum computing. The other type called quantum annealing is being developed by a Canadian company called D-Wave, which also is different from classical computing, but also different in many ways from gate-based quantum computing. Got it. And what are some examples of unconventional computing that is not quantum? Good. So now we're going to have some fun. I think before we got into the digital revolution, I'm going to go back, you know, before maybe even your parents were born, there was something called analog computing. And within analog computing, there was something called oscillation-based computing. It so happened that the digital uh, computing using transistors kind of won the battle, okay? And people forgot about it. But not everybody forgot about it. There were some people who then said, maybe there is a time to revisit such unconventional computing using lasers. And so one example of unconventional computing that is not quantum uses lasers uh, to do the computation. It's called coherent icing machine or CIM. Why did you get this interest in unconventional computing and what attracted you specifically to this coherent icing based computing? Good. As you know, uh, for the last 25 years, I've been developing classical algorithms, uh, solving problems using uh, classical machines, uh, created a software company and uh, you know, hundreds of supply chain uh, chains around the world use uh, these uh, software and classical algorithms. So uh, in some sense, I said, uh, there must be something else I could do now. And uh, unconventional computing attracted my attention. Now within unconventional computing, of course, quantum computing is very attractive and I got into it. And within quantum computing, I looked at Ising based quantum computing and then Ising computing uh, more broadly. So I suppose I look for unconventional computing within unconventional computing. Wow, that sounds really cool. Uh, can you delve a little more into these coherent ising based computing methods? How do they work? So let me try to explain this, uh, I suppose, as simply as possible. First, it doesn't work anything like how your iPhone or iPad works. Second, it doesn't even work anything like the new fangled machines that Google and IBM are investing in in quantum computing. What we do here is we take laser beams, yes, laser beams like Star Wars, and manipulate these laser beams to interfere between themselves in such a way that out of that emerges the solution we're looking for. So it's almost like magic. You take a bunch of laser beams and then you electronically play with them and out of that playing, you know, like a dance between photons and electrons, a boom, you get the answer you're looking for. Wow. That, that really does sound amazing. So is all your research based on this type of icing based computing? A large fraction of it is icing based uh, for two reasons. One, as I said, I want to be unconventional within the unconventional, but more practically, uh, I believe that uh, icing machines can be built much more easily than other types of quantum machines uh, and other types of unconventional machines because we already have components. It works in room temperature. And I think it will be cheaper. 
So in some sense, you can call me a pragmatic futurist. That is, I want to dream, but I also want to dream in some sense efficiently. Got it. So there are a lot of interesting future possibilities for all these types of unconventional computing and quantum computing. What can we do right now with unconventional computing? Good. So unconventional machines are not there yet, right? Because we're still building them. But thinking unconventionally, that is creating unconventional algorithms for hard problems actually has already led to great benefits. These unconventional algorithms can be run on conventional machines. So think of it as a baby step towards the future. We are solving classical algorithms on classical machines. Right now, the Tepper School of Business Research is going to be solving unconventional algorithms on conventional classical machines. And then when the unconventional machines come about, quantum or coherentizing machine, we can then solve unconventional algorithms on unconventional machines. So right now, we can actually solve unconventional algorithms on conventional machines 100 times faster, actually, uh, than uh, conventional algorithms. So I'm very happy that I'm able to beat my own previous record of solving hard problems. Wow, so it seems like there's already a lot we can do now and a lot of great advances being made. What do you see as the future going forward in, in the conventional computing? So conventional computing is not going to go away, okay? So computers are fast, they do great stuff, uh, they will continue to get faster and they, can, they will continue to do greater stuff. So. Uh, I think the future uh, is not going to be 100% unconventional. Right now, you could say the current is 100% conventional. The future I see, most realistically, is the hybrid between classical and unconventional, and people finding creative ways of thinking, how do I marry them both, you know, to solve the problem at hand. So I think the future is a hybrid between conventional and unconventional computing. Got it. All right. Thanks so much for talking to us, Professor Thayer. Happy to be here. Uh, thank you for inviting me. It is a very exciting time, really, to be uh, thinking unconventionally. And uh, I hope uh, uh, folks learn something today that uh, they probably never thought of before.